If Link stands here long enough, he actually does uh, shiver. There he goes. And he sneezes sometimes, too. Yeah, see? There he goes. This ice cavern is the smallest dungeon in the game, if you can call it a dungeon. It's full of icicles, stalactites, what is it? stalactites, which are the ones that hang from the ceiling, and stalag, with a G, stalagmites, which come from the floor. It's also full of these, uh, freezers, they're called. I don't think I can reach all the way over there. They kind of look like old men, those freezers. If you get close, I mean, the sculpting, they kind of look like Santa Claus with a beard. Maybe that's just me. They take three hits apiece. Or you can just use Dense Fire, which is the easy way. And the stupid fairy is letting me know about another fairy. Play the Song of Storms and a big fairy pops out. The big fairy will refill your hearts and magic meter. Woo! Oh, well, was he? Close one! Anytime you hear that chick 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 chick, you want to run. You know what? I just went back to the entrance. My bad. The icicles do regrow, so if you stay there for about 10 seconds, um, there will be more icicles for you. They'll fall back on your head. Ah, eh, rupees. Reapers are useless. Until I get to the fishing game a little later. Then I gotta keep going and coming out. This dungeon is a cross, basically. This is the central chamber, and then it has one north, one south, one east, one west. We came from the south. No! I don't care. Thing is, it's technically possible to roll under these without being hit, but it's kinda hard. Uh, the good news is that if you are rolling and they hit you, it doesn't do any damage. But don't push it, because if you roll too late or too soon, it'll still take damage. It's only a quarter heart's worth. I mean, there's a heart right there, and there's another heart in the next room. This is the first time we see silver rupees. Silver rupees are worth five rupees apiece, I believe. Basically a blue rupee. But they're a little bit bigger, and they allow you to open doors. Of course, you can hear the chime. Missed one? Oh yeah, I missed one. The chime gets progressively higher pitched as you get more, until it triggers that chime. There are three Skultulas in this dungeon. That's the first. Come on. Ha! <laughs> I thought I was behind that, my bad. Now we're heading to the north cross, or the, the north leg. After the cross. This dungeon is very, very small, but it has a compass, and it has a map. Technically, I guess it has a treasure, if you count the iron boots. I mean, they're about on par with, like, an arrow that you can get without actually going through a dungeon. Like, uh, fire arrows. Oh! Rubbish! These are ice keys. Or is it pronounced keys? K-E-E-S-E. -E -E. I say keys. It's always a good idea to take care of the keys first. They just become obnoxious. Eh, I want that. Oh well. As you can see, there are three more hearts up there on the ledge. It's a good idea to save those until last. Some of these freezers move. Some of these freezers stay stationary. But they're all kind of annoying. Ah! Rupee, don't eat it. And the fairy has just discovered the blue fire! Woo! Because you know, natural gas burns blue, and this is something of a miracle apparently, but whatever. This is why it's good to have four bottles. You can just stock up. Three will get you done. I mean, you don't really need four, but it's it's handy in case you miss uh, dropping the fire by the ice. 
One more. Okay then. The good news is these guys are hookshot targets as well. It's a good idea to get as close to the red ice as you can before you drop the fire. Because you can miss. I mean, it looks pretty widespread, but sometimes it just doesn't melt the ice if you're not close enough, and that's frustrating. Map? It's covered with ice. It shatters into pieces. Link spends the next four hours trying to put it back together. This is a pot that contains a rupee. A big ol' uh, purple, pink, magenta rupee. It's worth like 200 rupees. And I don't need it. But I'll take it. Actually... I'm down two bottles, so while I'm in this room, I want to stock up. Blah, blah, blah. In Master Quest, uh, that uh, rupee is actually a Skultula under there, and you have to melt the ice and then kill the Skultula. It looked kind of silly. It just looked like there was a Skultula under the fire. It looked really, really cheap. You're not fire ice. Red ice, why not? I can see why they changed it. Master Quest, if you don't know, was the first draft of the game before they went back and said, you know what, let's tweak this. I think it would be more fun if we had it this way. Instead, let's include this, let's do that. Then later they released Master Quest on a disc. It was originally going to be on the 64 disc drive, but then again, so was this game, and that never happened. 64 DD never came out. And that's just as well. Clear a path. Ah! I'm on fire! I'm on fire! Ah! Ah! I'm on fire! Roll and put it out! Roll and put it out! Ah! It's full of icicles. This room technically is entirely optional. You can complete the dungeon without it. But I kind of like the heart piece. There's a Skultula up there. Skultula number two. This is the East Fork. Oh, come on. <sighs> you know, say what you will about clumsy graphics. I enjoy it. I mean, it's not like Wind Waker has breaking graphics. It all cell animation thing. I mean, come on, the GameCube's capable of better. But it's a fun game. Could be more fun. My beef with Wind Waker is that you've got these, like, 49 quadrants to go to. 7x7 seven seven map, and you can go anywhere on this big open sea. Just sail. And then the game kind of leads you around by the nose anyway. It's like, here you go, you're a pirate, the open sea is at your call. Go for it. Go to any of these islands. Go explore. But not that one. And not that island either. Not that island. Mm, let's not go to these three yet. In fact, let's just keep it to these two. But not this one or this one. It's like, what What the hell? I mean, <sighs> It's frustrating. Good continuation. Got the whole saga. I favor a split timeline. I, technically, I don't think The Legend of Zelda is meant to be a, a continuous timeline. It's just different stories with the same character, basically. The same premise, different stories retold. It's a game, not a movie. Actually, I've heard uh, video games are the new movies. The video game industry makes, like, three times more than the movie industry. And people play games more than they play movies these days. So that's cool. But uh, if you want a, a continuous timeline, I favor a split timeline. It seems to make the most sense, starting with this game. I haven't played a lot of the handheld games. I played Oracle of Seasons. That one was okay. 
meant to go back and play Oracle of Ages, but I never got to that. Haha. <laughs> hey, I was getting to you. Pick a number. <laughs> 